Okay, if I had to give you five tips on how to get better results with TIG welding aluminum, this is what they would be. Let's go. Okay, first thing here, pay attention to the cleaning action. This is probably the most important one here. This is gonna be the area directly surrounding the weld itself. It's this little snowy looking area right next to the welding deposit right here. We want this area to be relatively narrow and consistent as possible. Look at this example right here. Do you see how the white part of the cleaning action looks nice and clean? Now compared to this example here where we can see it looks all scratched and erratic. And this example here shows the cleaning action starting to become minimal or disappearing completely. What we want to do is we want to see everything looking clean and consistent like this example here. Check it out. And we want this area to look as consistent all the way from the start of the pass to the finish. This is something you can check out in my workbook that you can download right now for free. It's in the description below. One thing I recommend to get better results with this detail is to try practicing shorter passes. It makes it much easier to learn to control this detail right from the start. It'll be much easier to practice well exercises doing shorter passes like that. As you start to get more consistent and confident at getting these details perfect, at this point you can then start practicing with longer passes. That's how you improve strategically with this one. Keep them clean and consistent. Okay, next tip, let's go. Feed the filler material correctly. A lot of people have problems with the end of the filler material blowing off and turning into this gross blob here. Boo! Feed the filler material correctly like this. Feed to this area right here. It's roughly halfway from the leading edge of the puddle to the center of the puddle here. The filler material is gonna break off much more cleanly. It's not gonna blob off the end like this and look all jacked. You want a tip that looks like this, nice and clean with a little pointy end on it. If the end of the filler material looks like this here, it means you did this perfectly, well done. Also make sure you are feeding in line with the travel direction. Do not feed from the side like this example here or any other angles. You wanna feed in line with the direction that you are traveling. And then taking a look at your angles like this graphic right here, check it out. Make sure that the filler material is approximately 90 degrees to the torch's travel angle. If you follow these guidelines, you're gonna have a much easier time with the filler material. This is one detail that a lot of people assume they've done correctly, but a lot of people get stuck on this one. Ensure that your gear is put together correctly. It seems very simple, hold on, check this out. Look at all of these fittings that can go in your torch here. You need to make sure that when you're looking at what type of torch you are using, all of your consumables and fittings go together properly and they are the correct parts for the torch that you are using. Here's another rough diagram here. This is from the same TIG welding workbook. Go download it. Sometimes it's so easy to have one of these fittings loose without you even knowing it. Perhaps the adapter you're using on your torch is not the correct one. And if any of these parts are not done up correctly or they're not a proper fit for the type of torch that you are using, your gas coverage is going to suffer immensely or your welding arc completely. Also, make sure that everything is clean. If you are using a gas screen, it needs to be free of any splatter or debris. And make sure the inside of your cup is clean as well. Your gas coverage is gonna be much smoother as you are welding. And you're also gonna improve the stability of your welding by a ton. Okay, here we go, here's the next one. Make sure you are using the correct amount of gas for the cup size you are using. This is really tricky with TIG welding aluminum, a lot more than you think actually. A lot of people just assume that TIG welding needs lots of gas, but it really depends on what size of cup you are using and even more so by the project that you are working on. For aluminum, I would recommend using anything between a number five size cup and a number eight size cup. Personally, for aluminum, I would not use anything bigger than a number eight cup at all. If you're using something like this one here, this is a number six setup. This will be used on a diffuser type setup. The amount of gas is gonna be much different than if you were using something like this number eight cup for a gas lens right here. If your gas lens is way too high coming through something like this here, you're gonna notice that your puddle is being pushed around and it's gonna be wobbling all over the place. Boo! I do find that using a gas lens and a gas screen is going to keep the flow of gas much more stable. I love these things. And a good rule of thumb for you to remember, a big cup obviously requires a little more gas and a smaller cup requires less gas. Again, this depends if you're using a diffuser type setup or a gas lens type setup, of course. But if you set this correctly, you're gonna save yourself some argon and you're gonna improve the stability of your puddle as you are welding. Okay, next one here, back to the filler material. Make sure that you are using the right amount of filler material. This is how you tell. If you aren't using enough filler material, you're gonna reliably see your stuff getting too hot and overheating. Your passes are gonna to become too wide. They're gonna to fall flat or concave and they're gonna to start to fall hollow 
yellow. Again, you're gonna see this indicated by the cleaning action diminishing like we talked about earlier. And overall, this is gonna indicate that you are not using enough filler for the amount of heat that you are using. Remember, it's a balance between these two. We gotta get them perfectly in balance with one another. However, on the flip side, if you use too much filler material, you're gonna see inadequate fusion into the base material like this example here. This is gonna look like terrible hard edges like these ones here. We want our edges to be nice and smooth and transition really well into the base material like this example here. Download my free workbook for TIG welding aluminum. It's in the description below, go get it. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty, Phil and Chill. We'll talk soon, peace.